Hello, I'm John Britcher, Field Service Engineer with Nordson. Today we're going to learn the proper operation of our standard 387 benchtop dispenser. The 387 is a gravity-fed cup displacement system. It's mandatory that the operator use the appropriate PPE while working with this equipment. The appropriate PPE will be determined by your facility's safety guidelines, the safe handling information contained on the MSDS sheets, and the cautions and warnings chapter in our operations manual. This system contains chemicals that are under pressure. I must stress the importance of safe operation. It is recommended that the operator have the following items on hand. Disposable cups for ratio samples, weight scale, calculator, timer, disposable rags, and compatible cleaner. Anytime you use this equipment, whether it's the initial startup or the day-to-day -day operation, a visual inspection is required. The intent of the visual inspection is to detect any abnormal conditions that would affect the safe operation or mix quality. An example would be to check for leaks or excessive wear. During the initial startup, the back cover must be removed temporarily to gain access to the oil isolation valve. Make certain you follow all facility and manufacturer's safety guidelines when doing so. Remove the main air supply and relieve any trapped energy before removing the cover. With the cover removed, open the hydraulic oil isolation valve. The valve is located in the upper left hand corner connected to the oil reservoir. The valve is closed during shipment to prevent the oil spillage in the event the system becomes overturned. The 387 uses air pressure, hydraulics, and mechanical adjustments to control the dispense cycle volume and flow rate. Along the front of the meter you'll find some of the control features. Beginning at the top we find the air pressure gauge. The air pressure gauge can be adjusted by using the yellow knob directly below. The air pressure should be adjusted between 60 and 80 psi during operation. The system requires at least 60 psi for optimum performance. The actual air pressure will only be displayed on the gauge during an active dispense cycle. The air pressure will read zero PSI while the system is static. Below the yellow knob you'll find two buttons. Each of these buttons will control either the manual dispense or the manual reload. The manual dispense button when pressed momentarily will initiate the dispense cycle. The carriage will travel down and the material will be dispensed until the internal reload trigger is tripped. Once tripped, the meter will automatically reload. The manual reload button can be pressed at any time during an active dispense cycle and an immediate reload will be triggered. There's also a foot trigger that functions the same as the manual dispense button. The foot trigger allows convenient hands-free dispensing. The red indexing knob at the bottom of the 387 is a flow or speed control. The speed control knob is a valve that restricts the flow of hydraulic fluid, which in turn slows the speed of the dispense rate. You must note that the knob only controls the dispense speed and does not control the reload. The reload speed is fixed. The knob contains a small set screw that can be locked, keeping the flow at a fixed speed. The white knob on top of the 387 between the two tanks is for shot size adjustment. The knob can be turned in order to control the volume of the shot size. Turning the knob clockwise will draw the automatic reload switch closer to the carriage, triggering a reload sooner that reduces the output. The final set of adjustment knobs are contained within the back cover of the 387. These control knobs can only be accessed when the main air is disconnected and all the trapped energy is released. You must follow all facility safety guidelines when removing the back cover. The knobs are found at the base of both the Part A and Part B metering cylinders. The purpose of these knobs are to allow a mechanical adjustment that influences the time of which Part A or Part B begin to meter. This function is used to compensate for differences in material viscosity and flow characteristics. They can be used to ensure that both Part A and Part B exit the nozzle at the same time. This ensures the quality of the mixed material. 
We use the terms lead and lag to describe this condition. The knobs are indexed according to a stack of colored discs. These discs are color coded in order from top to bottom, starting from orange, yellow, blue, white, and black. The factory default setting should be at the midpoint of the blue disc. Threading the knob down towards the black disc will force the cup and cylinder to meter faster. In turn, the material will exit the nozzle sooner. Once you're familiar with the controls and functions of the system, it's now time to consider the material. You must have copies of both the MSDS sheets and the TDS sheets. The data sheets will confirm which part A or B is either the catalyst or resin. Depending on the mix ratio, it's vital that you understand which part is introduced into the proper reservoir. It's important to note that part A can be either high volume, low volume, catalyst, or resin, depending on the manufacturer. You must understand these properties before you proceed. Now that part A and part B components are verified, it's time to fill the reservoirs. The viscosity and formulation of the material will determine how it's transferred. It's important to use caution when doing so. You should not introduce air pockets during the transfer process. You may also need to pre-mix the material if it contains solids or fillers. Fillers can separate and settle to the bottom of a container over time. Fillers must be remixed and brought back into suspension prior to transfer. If fillers are left in the container, the weight ratio will be affected. Your material supplier and the TDS sheets will contain proper handling instructions. Air can be introduced into the material during the transfer of the material if it's poured too fast or haphazardly. Various techniques can be used to pour the material without the introduction of air. Pouring the material down the side of the tank is the most common. A thin material may froth, a thick material may fold during transfer. In both cases, air will be introduced. Air can cause weight ratio variations as well as mixture problems. If air in is introduced, you may need to allow time for the material to sit, degas, and allow the air bubbles to rise to the top and be released. Now that the tanks are filled and the material is free of air, it's time to prime the fluid circuit. Remove the grease cap from the dispense valve and place a waste container beneath the valve. Priming the cylinders will be accomplished by repeated dispense cycles. Cycle the meter repeatedly until you begin to see material flow from the valve. You will notice a slowing of the carriage as material begins to fill the cylinders. You will also notice that the material discharged from the valve will contain air bubbles. This is normal during the initial prime. Continue to cycle the meter until the material flow is clean and clear. At this point, it's time to begin the second step in the priming process. The valve must be removed elevated and pointed upwards. An assistant may also be required so that the valve may remain elevated as cycling continues. At this time, you may also attach a mix tube that will help direct the discharge into an elevated container. Please note, depending on the viscosity, this process may need to be repeated several times. In general, a thick material will prime faster than a thinner material. When using a thin material, it is more likely that air will become trapped in high spots within the fluid circuit. After the bleed process is complete, you may now begin the weight ratio verification. At this point, you will use your TDS, gram scale, and disposable cups. The weight ratio will be obtained by the division of the catalyst weight sample into the weight of the resin sample. The weight ratio is collected using the supplied ratio adapter assembly. The ratio adapter is a three-piece assembly that is attached to the threaded end of the dispense valve. Start by attaching the threaded adapter ring, followed by the divider, gasket, and collar. You must dispense one full shot through the divider so that the fluid passages are primed and free of air. At this point, you can tear or make note of the cup weight on your scale. With the cup weight removed from the equation, slide both A and B cups into the divider slot and dispense one full shot. Weigh each sample individually and record the results. Divide these results to obtain your weight ratio. This process should be repeated at least 10 times during the initial startup. During the initial startup, 
After ratio has been verified, it's advised that mixed samples be made. Cured samples can be used to identify the need for any adjustments. Install the mix tube in the safety shroud. Cycle the meter until the mix tube is fully primed with mixed material. It's now necessary to begin your purge timer. The timer must be set according to the cure schedule contained on the TDS sheets. The material will begin to cure as soon as they are introduced to each other within the mix tube. The mixed volume of the material within the tube must be expelled before the timer runs out. If the timer expires before the volume is dispensed, you must discard the mixer. This practice will be used any time the mixer is in use. Cure samples can be shot into disposable cups or strung out into a bead. A soft or wet spot in the cured sample can indicate the need to make an adjustment to the lead lag knobs. We learned the purpose of these knobs earlier in the video. You can remove the mix tube and observe the timing of the two materials as they exit the dispense valve. Adjust the knobs until both materials exit the gun at the same time. Once the knobs are set for best results, they will not need to be adjusted. Repeat the cure test and record your results. After testing is complete or at the end of a production shift, it is necessary to shut down the system properly. Shut down the system by removing the mix tube and safety shroud. Dispense one full shot through the dispense valve to flush out any old material. Remove the airline. Clean the discharge ports separately, being careful not to cross-contaminate part A and part B. Install the clean, freshly greased nightcap.